Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of A Quick Pint. Now, I'd just like to draw your attention to a rather interesting study which demonstrates that the people that go into the teaching profession are increasingly doing so for utterly self-centred reasons. Now, this shouldn't be a surprise because we are living in an increasingly selfish society. Until certainly the 60s, we lived in a society that was highly group-oriented. Remember, we have these five sets of moral foundations, um, the group-oriented foundations of in-group loyalty, of obedience to authority, uh, and of sanctity versus disgust, and the individually-oriented foundations of harm avoidance and equality. Um, we have these two kinds of foundations because we are a pack animal, so we must operate for the good of our pack, but we also must ascend the hierarchy of our pack, so we have an inclination to be individualistic. Now, there's a lot of evidence uh, that are cropped, certainly since the 60s, that we have shifted to being a much more individualistic society. Um, even analyses of representative corpuses of texts have shown that we are increasingly selfish. Out goes words about self-sacrifice and lots of words about this kind of thing, and in come words about individual feelings and, 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 that, sort, and that, sort of, that sort of stuff. We are moving to, and we are encouraged in this way to be individualistic, to think about ourselves, to think about um, our own feelings, our own mental health, our, our, how, how we feel, how it affects us above the general good of society. Now, there are certain professions that were respected, or at least are, are traditionally respected, because it is assumed that you do those out of a sense of self-sacrifice. You don't do them for the money, you don't do them for the prestige, you don't do them for the benefits, you do them out of a genuine sense of calling, and that is part of why the profession is looked up to, or has been looked up to. An example would, of course, be a priest. Obviously, no one would expect someone to go into being a priest uh, for, for nakedly financial reasons. Being a doctor, there's a sense in which you're meant to you take an oath to, to do the best by your patients. And also, I think, being a school teacher, there is this idea, at least in England, there is this idea that you're not just there as doing a job. You're not simply an educational professional. Being a school teacher is a calling that you are you, you are called to do, to do the best for the children and to mould them for the greater good of society. And you will therefore be expected, and this is indeed the case in England, to make sacrifices. A lot of uh, English school teachers work the full day um, teaching and then do their marking in the evening in their own time when they're not paid to do so. Going on strike in English schools involves working to rule, i.e. only working the number of hours you are paid to work. And when school teachers do this in the UK, everything grinds to a halt, because the assumption of the system is that you are in it for the good of your pupils. Whether this is the case, I, but th that is the assumption of the system. Now, Finland, in my experience, is much less like that. And there, there's much less of a voluntary culture in Finland. Everybody expects to be paid for everything they do. Um, everybody is, and and uh, uh, there, there is there is evidence now, a new study, and it shocked even Finland of just how selfish new teachers, who, uh, trainee teachers, who are of course overwhelmingly female, are. And the new study found that ultimately people in Finland who are training to be teachers go into the teaching profession for selfish reasons. They go into the teaching profession, 62% of them said, because it helps them to find a sense of personal meaning in life. 40% of them said, oh, it promotes their own sort of sense of their, their own sort of sense of well-being. 29% of them said that, uh, that they were you know, they were doing it for, the, for their own good, for their own personal reasons. It made them sort of just feel good. And 19% of them said they were going into it because you get long holidays, basically. And so that's quite a good reason to go into it. You, you get lots of long holidays and lots of time to yourself. And that's it. So they're going into it for utterly selfish reasons. They are not going into it out of any genuine desire to help children or to make self-sacrifices for the good of children. Now, the pe people have criti uh, this was uh, this was uh, this research has been criticised. This idea, you know, this, this idea that oh, your life goals and whatever it's it's, it's self-centred has been criticised by um, somebody from uh, the the sort of students, the teachers, the teachers, students. Uh, sort of society at the University of Eastern Finland and he said that the very fact that Finnish teachers are being called self-centred by researchers just says that they're held in, the teachers are held in contempt and that teachers work is not appreciated. 
No, it doesn't. Finnish teachers are being called self-censored by researchers because surveys have been administered to them which have shown that the people that are going into teaching are going into it for self-centered reasons. They're not saying, I'm going into it because I really want to help children. I really want to help children grow. I really want I really want to help children develop intellectually and socially and all this kind of stuff. And this is a real kind of passion for mine. That's not why they go into it. They go into it for their own personal reasons because they feel it gives them a sense of meaning to do it or they feel that they get, they have lost. Long, uh, summer holidays, which 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 they do. Now another, um, uh, they, then they then interviewed a load of Finnish teach a load of Finnish teacher training students, all of them female, and these students said, oh well, that's outrageous to say that. Um, they don't understand that it's really really. Hard. Why shouldn't we go into it for our own selfish reasons? It's not a contradiction to go into it for our own selfish reasons and make sacrifices. Don't they know that the work follows you home? Don't they know that we do so much at work in our spare time? We Finnish teachers. No, they do not. The Finnish school day is half of the school day of, of, a, of a British school. Finnish school pupils spend half their day at school. The other half of the working day, the Finnish teachers are there at school being paid, doing marking, doing organisation and whatever it happens to be. There is no expectation of them to take work home with them. There is no need for them to take work home with them. And the evidence of their utter selfishness is that a number of times in the last few years, they have gone on strike. And I don't, and by the way, they are paid an outrageously high salary if you can compare to British teachers. They're paid a little bit less than British teachers. But British teachers work the full working day with hardly any free periods and have to take their work home with them and do all their marking and stuff at home. I mean, I'm not defending British teachers. The standard of British teachers is extremely low uh, intellectually, as, as, as we well know, and is declining. But that's what they have to do. Finnish teachers are not expected to take anything home with them and they get, uh, and they get paid almost as much money. I mean, it beggars belief. And the Finnish schooling system is so disorganised. Imagine a system where you don't know from one day to the next what time your child starts school. You have to look it up. What time are you starting school today? Oh, eight o'clock. All right. OK, great. So eight o'clock tomorrow. Oh, no, ten o'clock tomorrow. Oh, how convenient. Oh, what time are you starting after that? Oh, oh nine o'clock. Uh, and, and on and on it goes. And you can never know what's going on from one day to the next, from one week to the next. Wouldn't it be simpler to just have a 9 to 4 school day or a 9 to 3.30 school day? Of course it wouldn't, because it wouldn't be simpler for the teachers, because Finnish schools are organised for the convenience of the teachers, not the convenience of the pupils. They're organised so that these fundamentally lazy teachers can spend half their day not doing any teaching, so i.e. planning lessons or whatever they happen to do, and then go home and relax in the evening, and then have a summer holiday which constitutes the entire the entirety of June, the entirety of July, and most of August. The laziness of these people beggars belief. But anyway, I just want to draw attention to the fact that this this other sign of the degeneration of society, this this others this this new sign, even in terms of Finnish research, of the breakdown of selflessness, of the breakdown of self sacrifice, and that is the clear evidence that increasingly it is selfish people who become school teachers in Finland. Hello, hello, hello! The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as uh, shirts, and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House, and I will see you all soon, and goodbye!